Amen. And where would I be? Well, I would be inside of Adam's body. Not God. Not Jesus. I love Jesus to go back to Adam's body. And Adam's body is dead in hell. Okay. I'm not speaking about the actual Adam. I'm talking about spiritually speaking. The Adam's body is dead in hell. And I believe that even hell itself, as some people have explained and God has shown, hell itself even itself has a body. The Bible says that um, hell enlarges itself. Okay, to receive more souls, the word of God says. Okay. So people are falling into hell. Falling into hell because they have not fallen into Christ. Verse 15, because if God's explaining to us where we need to be, where we need to stand, then do it in this to Paul, our brother Paul. Verse 15, but the free gift is not like the transgression. Now, what is the transgression? It's the act of Adam, or the act that came through Adam's body, which was to eat the fruit. To eat the fruit brought spiritual death to a body. A spiritual body, right, that's forbidden, a fruit that God said do not eat, a fruit that brought in devastation and destruction, and but, but more than anything, it brought a curse. That fruit brought a curse upon the seed of Adam and all who came from it. But you see, there are two Adams, as the word of God explains. Adam, as we call him, the word Adam means man, and then there is Jesus, okay. The Savior, the Messiah, the chosen one of God. Yeshua, as his name is in Hebrew. So this man, Adam, these two men are both Adams. They both represent seeds. They both represent a new beginning. Okay? The Bible says, but the free gift is not like the transgression. So there's something coming from the old Adam. Transgression hits because Adam's transgression comes with a variety of curses. Like I was saying earlier, when I was working at McDonald's, we had a, a variety of responsibilities that we were just aware of. Amen. It wasn't just come here and flip burgers. So in the same way, when you're in Adam, there's a variety of things that you just have to deal with. Understand? You understand that you're confined to the rules of this world. You understand that you know you can only do so much. You understand that you don't have all power. God does. You understand that you have to work and you may have to work in pain and anguish until, as the Bible says, that God cursed at me. So you're going to work. Um, you eat from the, from the sweat of your brow. You'll eat until you return to the dust because from the dust you were taken into the dust you will return. Okay? That's the curse. That a man is cursed to live on this earth to eat, to work, to eat. Okay? Until he returns to dust. So a man or a woman, I heard someone say, uh, I heard someone talk about an artist and they said, this person said, it was, this woman said, I'm always working and trying to do something because I don't want to be poor. I don't want to be back to being poor. So I'm always having to be working, 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 working. Okay. That's a curse. And this person is a celebrity. But still under, the, under Adam's curse. Do we see that Paul didn't speak that way? Paul said, for example, one time in the word, if you read the, the, the word of God, and Paul said in the New Testament, he said, you know, some of us were, 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 um, were, were, were destitute, were um, poorly clothed, okay? And he talked about the, the position, current position of some of the um, servants of God, amen? And he said that we're like the scum of the earth. But he also said we count all joy, all of these things that, that, go, that we endure, okay? It doesn't matter. Because we're not from Adam. We're from the second Adam. So for that to happen to us, it doesn't even matter. One day, we could be down seemingly in the world's eyes from the, from the point of view of the sons of Adam. Now, where are the sons of Adam? They're on TV. When you turn the TV on, you see the sons of Adam displayed in front of you many times. They're talking to you, telling you how you should be thinking and, and living. They're on the app TikTok. The sons of Adam are on TikTok. The sons of Adam are on Sons of Adam are on YouTube and Facebook and any other app. They're telling you how you should think and they're also telling you how you should talk. They're even telling you how you should dance. 
How dare someone tell me how I need to dance, but they're telling you how you need to dance. They're telling you what dances to end dance to do. I was talking today, I mean, excuse me, not today, I was talking this week, um, I telling someone how, excuse me, and I was actually listening to how someone was saying that, excuse me, how many artists today, many mainstream artists today, and, and they were talking about rappers, hey, man, um, have to be sexually abused, I'm putting it lightly, they have to be sexually abused to get a position, period, okay? A lot of people that you see, rappers, the latest rapper or singer, this guy was saying that, and he said he knows because he was in the industry, he said that all of them, not some of them, he said all of them to have a, a position, they had to go through a type of hazing, and they had to be sexually abused just to get that position. And they go hire to keep it, they have to be, it has, I'm sure it has to continue, okay? And, and, and when you think about it, you can see it on their faces. You can see it in what they say. You can see how they talk. You can see that in, in the spirit that their music is made in. Okay, that something's not right. But this is what the sons of Adam have to go through. It's a curse. It's a, it's a cursing that causes cursing. Yes. And that will cause me even, that cause you even the curse. You, you, you're not only cursed, but you're going to do a, conti a continual cursing. Okay. Like we say, and like the Bible says, we're blessed to be a blessing. Yes. Or cursed to be a cursing. Mm -hmm. Cursed to be cursing and cursed to be a cursing. Yes. If a person can be a blessing, they can be a cursing. Mm -hmm. Which is to say, being around you, I'm being cursed. Mm -hmm. Listening to what you're saying, I'm being cursed. Okay? Because you are a cursing. A person can be a cursing. They can be a curse. Right, and they're cursing. And the cursing comes from Adam. I'm not saying it's a damn Adam, but I'm saying it's because God has not, has not called us to, to walk in the, in the damn nation of Adam. He's called us to walk in the new life of Christ. But some people, because of a variety of reasons, it could be your friends, social media, it could be church people. I mean, it's church people also, church friends. That, could, that will lead you into the mindset and the cursing of Adam. You don't got any money right now, sister? Any money right now, brother? Oh, well, hey. Just keep, hang in there. Is that what the Bible says? Is that what God says? I thought it said we come boldly before the throne of grace. I thought it says that if I don't see anything, like Abraham, our father of faith, I'm looking around. I want you to take your son, your only son, and sacrifice them to me. Now we have to understand, and this is what God told Abraham, we have to understand that Abraham, when he had to sacrifice his son Adam, for Abraham, that meant much more than, well, yeah, for Abraham, that meant much more than what people thought for him to sacrifice his son, okay? Yes. Because for Abraham to sacrifice his son, it meant his future posterity. It meant actually his name. Yes. And his company, as we call it today, we would call it a company. But what, what Abraham was doing in his, um, his lifestyle and everything, he, he worked for himself. We, we would say today he, he was an entrepreneur or something like that, okay? He worked for himself, all right? He worked for a company. He had a company of people that worked under him. But if he were to pass away, and he, when he was alive, he needed a son and heir. Let someone else, because if he didn't have a son or heir, someone else could come in and they could have a different mindset and he would have no control over them. Just say, don't do this, do this, do this this way, the right, righteous way, okay? He needed a son, but he didn't have a son because God did not provide him a son. Then when God did, but that was all in the plan of God, amen? Then when God did provide him a son, he said, I want you to take his, your son and kill your son. So he's saying, listen, Abraham, I bless you, now I'm going to take the blessing away. You ever been blessed by God real good, and then it seems like sometime you're not blessed by God real good? And the devil may say, yeah, see, I got you. The devil could have told Abraham, see, even God is against you. Even God won't let you be blessed, Abraham. Even God don't want to help you. I mean, he let you spend all of this time where you didn't have an heir. You were praying every day for an heir. He didn't bring you an heir. And then when he finally brings you an heir, he brings you Isaac, he's going to take him away. Look at the God that you got. I mean, your God don't really care about you. Amen. But the Bible says that when Abraham was there with his son Isaac, and he had the, um, I believe, the knife over his son, and he heard voice of God from an angel saying don't do that Abraham he told him to, to, to hold his hand 
I believe in my heart that Abraham was expecting something to happen. Yes. The Bible says later on that Abraham surmised and believed that God could even raise the dead yes. if he had to kill his son. But Abraham knew God was going to do something. Why would, why would God give me a son and tell me to do my son? These blessings would come and then tell me to kill my son unless he had a plan for something else to happen. So the thing is, I believe Abraham was like this. Looking like, Lord, 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 Lord. Okay. Our brother Abraham was looking to hear the voice of God. Amen. He was listening. Because our, our brother Abraham walked in faith. And we, and we see that God did not abandon him in his time of need. All right. Once again, someone can say, hey, you're going to do need right now. God ain't with you. But Abraham said, listen, it's okay if I'm in need. Paul said, we're poorly clothed. Okay. Bible says that the prophet, some of them went about in goat skins and, and, and sheep skins. All right. But the Bible says that they knew that they had a greater home. A greater place. But the curse of Adam is, this is my heaven, this is my throne, this is my all in all. Earth is my all in all. Earth, the final frontier. Amen. It sounds like a curse, doesn't it? I've never seen it. Who, who here has seen a TV show say, Earth, the final frontier? I've never seen that. Do the show that says final frontier, but they don't say Earth is the final frontier. If that, sh if that was, a, name, if that was a, a statement in that show, people probably wouldn't even tune into the show. <laughs> Earth, the final frontier? What? No, 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 it's not Earth. But many people, Earth is all there is. You may say, well, brother, I don't believe in that. I don't aspire to that. But some, many of us live that way. We're being conditioned. You ever heard the term reconditioned? Conditioning? We're being conditioned to think that way. We're being conditioned to love the world. Bible says if you love the world, you cannot love God. Okay? Jesus said, don't love the world. But there's a conditioning going on. Yes. Do the phone, do the apps, do TV, do everything. Do every commercial. There's a commercial that comes on a lot and a woman says, we've evolved throughout the years. Humans have evolved through many things. That's like this ad that comes all the time. You know, it's like an unskippable ad I see a lot. Humans have evolved through many things and it's about something totally different. No, God has created and destroyed. God has built up and brought down. Amen. But they want to condition us. But I won't be conditioned. I will believe in God and obey his word. And Jesus Christ died for us under no conditions for us to receive it said that we would say yes. Amen. And receive the free gift of God. As the Bible says here, but the free gift is not like the transgression. For if by the transgression of the one, the many died, much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to the many. Verse 16, the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For on the one hand, the judgment arose from one transgression, resulting in condemnation. But on the other hand, the free gift arose from many transgressions, resulting in justification. For by the transgression of the one, death reigned through the one. Much more those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life, reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So then, as through one transgression, there results in condemnation to all men. See, because people that are living under condemnation in this world. Okay. Even so, through one act of righteousness, there results in justification. Okay? Justification in every matter. Amen? I read in the Proverbs, I believe it was Proverbs today, it says, those that 
The Bible said, um, those that, that know the Lord know all things. No, it, it says those that know the Lord, um, yeah, I believe it said something like that. Something said that to the fact. Those that know the Lord, they know, they, they know all things. All things are, are revealed to them, essentially, is what the Bible said. Amen. And it's funny. People, when people think that if you're, if you're a believer, you're closed-minded. I've heard that often, even recently. Christians are closed-minded. You're in religion, you're closed-minded. No, 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 no. A true Christian knows many, many things. And they know all things. When you are in God, he reveals to you many things. He'll reveal to you in your sleep something you didn't even weren't even concerned about so that you know all things. He'll put you somewhere. But don't but don't fake it till you make it. I know I know believers, I've seen believers act like they have oh I got I got skill in prophecy when you don't. Oh I got skill in, in words and knowledge when you don't. Okay? Those things are embedded in you because you are in God and God is in you. But we don't fake it till you make it like the world does. But God in time will put us and give us understanding in all things. Okay? Don't try to jump ahead and say, I'm here now when you're not you're not ready yet. That's like a new believer. You just, you just got saved and all of a sudden you want to be a pastor. Most people say, you can't be a pastor. You just got saved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, God says all things are mine. You know, heaven and earth, all things are mine. So, yeah, that's true, but you have to be put there. God has to place you. In time, God has to do things to, to move you. When I got, before I got saved, I was told I was going to be a pastor. Okay, that's great, but let it, but let it develop. Let it develop. Amen. Let, let, let it be. It's just like if someone says, I had a dream from the Lord that I was going to have a child. I was going to have a baby. So once you have that dream, the next day you go out and steal someone's baby. And say, this is my baby. Because I'm supposed to have a baby. And I saw a baby in a dream. But it's not your baby. Your baby has to be born. It has to develop. Okay? Many people, they grab, so, they supposedly grab an anointing. Or grab a word. Or grab a position. I'm a bishop. I'm this, I'm that. When they really are not that. But they don't want to wait. See, our job as believers is to work out these things, work out, work out our salvation with fear and trembling. In a week, I was doing a job a few weeks ago, a photography job, and a woman saw me doing this job, and she said, wow, you have great patience. You have great patience. And I thought, if I do, it's from the Lord. <laughs> it's from the Lord. Patience is from God. Okay? But not only that, it's work. It's a blessing, excuse me, in his work that God has given us. Mm -hmm. Amen. As believers. Not just regular patience, but great patience. With great patience, a person can bring someone to Christ. With great patience, a person can be an unbeliever, can be demonized, can be in all kind of mess, and they can come to Christ. With great patience, prostitutes, strippers, male and, and female have come to Christ. With great patience, murderers, thugs, gangsters have come to Christ. With great patience. Amen. Warlocks, witches have come to Christ. Amen. Do great patience. Do great patience of men, mothers praying for their sons, uh, fathers praying for their daughters, okay, and so on and so forth. Do great patience. These are the fruits of the Spirit. But as believers, it's not, it's not our job to jump ahead. This is mine. Okay. Immaturity is inside of the house of God. I'm going to say that. I feel like God is telling me to say that right now. Immaturity has been located in the body of Christ. Immaturity has been located in the body of Christ. Amen. Immaturity has been located in the body of Christ. And God is saying, pluck it off, throw it off. How long do you want to be immature? Now I want you to understand that in the body of Christ to be immature is to be one step away from the sons of Adam. Okay, because the sons of Adam are immature. Sons of Adam heard the Lord say, don't eat this fruit. And they went and ate it anyway. Un, not patient, immature. Okay, not patient. Doesn't patience come from maturity? If Adam was patient, he would have waited. At least for the Lord to have come and said, Lord, the snake said we should eat this fruit. What do you say? I mean, we know you told us before not to eat it, but that didn't happen. The Bible doesn't say that happened. It says that once they heard about it from the, from the snake, from the devil, they immediately ate it. They didn't have time to wait. The devil will always come like that, won't he? You don't got time to wait. You don't got time to wait. Come on now. Let's get to it. You ain't waiting long enough. It's time to be blessed. Amen. It's time, it's time for your blessing. Blessing is today. You ever notice a lot of people online, when they talk about blessings, it's always today. I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not lying. I'm not making this up. It's your season. Right. It, 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 it's, it's your season means it's today. Because it's not, it's not because the season, seasons come and go, don't they? You got 
you know, fall, winter, okay, different seasons. But they'll tell you it's your season. That means right now. It's today. No waiting. No waiting. No, no. He served right now. He served right now. You instant. Instant gratification. All right. And when someone goes on their phone, they say, let me open this phone up real quick. Do, 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 do. Judgment's coming to America. I heard that before. Do, 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 do. Stop saying, oh, I don't know about that. Do, 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 do. It's your season. Let's get this real quick. It's my season. Okay, it's my season. What do I need to do? What do, I need to do? Um, God is, is blessing me right now, real good. Mm -hmm. Send an offering of only $100. Oh. Well, for the prophetic impartation, why about I do that? Oh, let me look at this person's testimony. And the person comes up. I was listening to, to Prophet Hezekiah Jennings. And Prophet Hezekiah, I mean, Prophet Hezekiah, he said, just give a $100 seed. And the music is playing in the background. Oh, doom, doom, doom. You know that music to get you amped up, gets you in the mood. It's playing doom. Or they got somebody playing softly in the background. Doom, 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 doom. And you know, I didn't. I was on my last money. I was on my last money, but I reached in my wallet and I took that hundred dollar and I gave it as a seed. Yeah, and now, you know what? After I gave that seed, you know, my job—they rehired me, man. <laughs> and now I'm driving this brand new Bentley. God has blessed me. It's my season. Why can't it be your season? Why can't it be your season? And you look at that, and you say, yeah, yeah. Once again, immaturity and impatience has been, in lo has been located in the body of Christ. You see, I don't speak derisively against these people. I say they're in the body of Christ. It's been located, it's been found, it's been located in the body of Christ, and God is saying it's been spotted and this is heaven speaking when, when I say this. Because heaven says we located it. The angels are saying we, we, we've seen it. And God is saying pull it out. Because if you don't pull it out, you will be pulled out. You will be what's called extracted. Extracted. Okay? Because you see the body of Christ, God's body, has people who work on the wall. They work on the body itself to repair it. And they're always repairing it. They're always there like a doctor with a scalpel. scalpel. They're going in to pull something out. But the Bible says judge yourself lest you be judged. Mm -hmm. The Bible says also that God says if you're lukewarm I will spit you on my mouth. Yes. So he's telling you if you remain as in a position of being lukewarm you'll be thrown out of the body itself. Because he said I'll spit you out of my mouth. Okay now remember we're, the body is Christ. And we're in his body so you're being thrown out. You're actually being you're being ejected from his body completely. That means that you're being pushed out of salvation. That's right. Because you can actually be pushed out of salvation if you disobey God. Okay, you can be pushed out of all of that and ejected from him. Amen. He said, he said it's just like a flea on someone's arm. He can go like this. Boop, just, just flick it off. Or, or a mosquito or an ant and just flick it off. God said, I'll flick you off if you remain like this. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Immaturity and patience has been located in the body of Christ. It's our job to see it through. To see the process through. Yes. Bible says in verse 18, So then, as through one transgression there results a condemnation of all men, even so through one act of righteousness there results a justification of life to all men. For as through the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. Even so through the obedience of the one, the many were made righteous. The law came in so that the transgression would increase. But where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace would reign through righteousness. To eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Look how he ends this. So that as sin reigned in death, because Adam's sin reigned over all the earth itself, even so grace would reign through righteousness to eternal life. So grace is reigning through righteousness. And whose righteousness? Not our own, but the Lord's righteousness. As we are in him. 
to eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So you see, amen, amen, and I, I, mean, I think I'm going to close with this, amen. That's what the Lord has me to say more. We see that the sons of Adam, they don't, what they received was a curse unto death. God said, if you eat this fruit, you will surely live eternally. No. He said, if you eat this fruit, you will surely die. But the fruit of the second Adam, Jesus, grace would reign through a righteousness to eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So Jesus Christ gave us something different to eat. But we don't eat the fruit like Adam did. And that was called, as you said, the forbidden fruit. But we eat the sanctified fruit. The fruit that's laid out on the, 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 the food, I should say, is laid out on, on the table. And part of it that we take is the body of Christ in ourselves when we take communion. That's why I see people, when I see people in church not eating communion, I scratch my head. I say, how can you not eat communion? But maybe they've been taught wrong. Maybe they think that they're in sin, they shouldn't eat communion. Okay? And the Bible does say, if you're not repentant of sin, you shouldn't eat communion. So in that case, that would be true. Or sometimes, sometimes people say, well, I already had communion. You can never have too much communion. Trust me. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> I already had communion in my church. Have it again. But when we take communion, okay, unlike Adam eating that fruit, which is forbidden, we're taking the healing of Christ. We're taking the body of Christ. We're taking the forgiveness of our sins. But more than anything, we're reaffirming and saying, I'm, I've signed on the dotted line, and I'm in him. All right? I'm in Christ. All the curses of Adam, as a believer, I don't represent none of that. I don't represent that mindset. I don't represent what y'all are talking about. I represent God and God only. Amen. And God alone. My hope is found. Amen. And the songs we sing says, so our mindset should not be like the world's mindset. Okay? We have to make sure that we watch our mind and we, it will be watched. Sometimes the shows I'm, shows I'm going to watch, I have to turn them off because people keep cursing so much. I'm like, I want to watch this show, but the person is cursing so much, I, can't, I just can't watch it. I can listen to what they're saying because they can't talk without continually cursing. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's because they're in that curse of Adam. All right? And they're a son of Adam. But someone will say, listen, I'm a son of God. I saw a guy this other day. He was saying, um, you know, I believe in, it was a sports guy. He said, I believe in Jesus and, you know, I'm saved and this and that. And then he immediately cursed right after that he said that. He said, I can't forgive this team for doing this, this, and this. And you know, I'm a Christian. I'm supposed to forgive, blah, blah, blah. But I, and he blank, and he blank, and he blank. And I said, man. What, 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 you know, what, what are you? Are, are you? are you in or are you not in? You know? But some of us do the same. It's not, it's not um, Christians. It's not, uh, how can I say it? Ex acceptable for us to be cursing. Amen. Period. We should not be cursing on a regular. We should not be cursing at all. If you curse, ask God for forgiveness. I've cursed before when people on the road do stupid, foolish things. But I say, Lord, forgive me. I understand it's not how it's supposed to be. I'm not a son of Adam. I'm a son of the Christ. I'm a son of I'm a son of God. Amen. Or you're a daughter of the Lord. That's not acceptable. That should not be acceptable. And it's not something that's, that's accepted. To be walking around cursing, it, because those that are cursing, okay, are a are a cursing themselves, and they are cursing. We don't want to be cursed. We, and we, but we're blessed. Where you should go, there should be not a cursing, but a blessing. A blessing should follow you wherever you go. The reality is that, as the Bible says, the Bible says that after Jesus, think about it. The Bible says that after Jesus rose, what does it say? It says that people will leave the sick near the disciples. See, they understood we don't understand. I'm going to tell you right now. They understood a lot that we don't understand today. A lot of Christians don't understand today. Because we're too busy trying to hang with the sons of Adam. Too busy trying to hang with them. These guys knew we don't want that anymore. That's right. In the book of Acts, they understood we don't, we don't need that. The Bible says that they would just stand and walk by people. And people would get healed. But people, people would get healed because they understood that I, I am a blessing. You may say, why is that happen to me? It could be because you don't understand that. It's not that you don't have the power. It's that you just don't understand that. Because your mind is set on the sons of Adam. Okay? No, we, when I walk past you, you're going to get blessed. That's cocky. No, that's what the Bible says. I'm not, I'm not cocky. I'm saying what the, the sons of Adam will say that's cocky because they can't do that. That's why. It's cocky because they, they don't have no power, but we do. We got the power. Amen. 
I saw people of other religions online when they tried to attack me and what I was saying, I said, you don't have any power. And I said, show your power, but you can't. I said, you can't. And they had nothing to say to me. I said, because you don't have any power because you're not of God. The children of God have power. Paul said the word of God, the kingdom of God does not exist just in words, but in power. All right. And power and blessings shall follow us all the days of our life. Is what the Bible says? The blessings of God shall follow us. So if the blessing of God follows me, then if the sick is around me and I walk in past them, they should be blessed. Okay. And I've seen it coming in different places that people are blessed and I don't even talk to them. I come into a room or you come into a room and some of you guys have seen it. You come into an area and people, their countenance is raised. Their attitude, their spirit is raised by you being there. By you being there. Imagine a group of guys and a woman comes in dressed with a bikini on. One guy could have just lost his job. But if a woman who's very attractive comes in with a bikini on, it's going to raise his spirit. So what more a person that's been saved, sanctified, okay, washed in the blood, is a child of God, no longer the son of Adam, and they have all the power of God inside of them for them to walk around anywhere. They shouldn't even, even have to talk for the power of God to go for it. The Bible doesn't say that when, it, the, 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 um, when Peter walked past people, they had to say, hey brother, you see my shadow? You see my shadow? Are you healed? You see my shadow? You know, no, no. He just walked past people. He just walked, walked by and his shadow helped people. Because the shadow represented him. His, the shadow, it wasn't even him touching him. That's the part that's crazy. He didn't even have to touch him. But the fact that the sun shined down, the sun shined down and was blocked by his body. Just his body blocking the sun alone could cause somebody to be healed. <laughs> it caused you to be healed. In other words, just being around the guy. Being around the guy. The shadow is not even a part of a person. I mean, think about it. A shadow is not a part of a person at all. It's a temporary thing. It's, it's an instant. It's a thing that comes in an instant and disappears in an It can disappear in an instant. It's not a part of a person. But even a shadow, when shining on a, when, when, when cast by a believer, has supernatural power. <laughs> Has supernatural power. Can you believe that? Yes. I seen a guy online. I know this is true. He could take a fork, and many believers can do this. I see him do it. Take, they'll take a fork or a spoon and just touch it, and give it to a person. A person that's sick, and the person will get healed just from touching that spoon. As the Bible says, they would take handkerchiefs, and people will get healed just from handkerchief. That's right. <laughs> right. I could take this water right here. Say. I touch it. Drink the water. <laughs> Amen. You think about the part in the word of God where, where Jesus told a guy, he said, go to this, this, this lake and, and, and wash. I wonder if Jesus Christ washed in there. That's, maybe that's why he told him to go, go there and wash. Remember the guy, he told the guy to go wash and he said he would, he would receive his sight. Maybe Jesus Christ was there recently. So he said, hey, I was already there. Just go in there. You'll get help. And maybe they won't think of it that way. But, but the thing is, God's power can be transferred like that. So we're going to close in prayer today. We understand that we're at the frozen chosen, as my friend Larry says. We understand that we're not called to be sons of Adam, and we shouldn't want to be sons of Adam. And we, we need to understand what the sons of Adam have and what their um, inheritance is. Because the sons of Adam, have a, they have a deal. They have a deal, a package deal. When you get car insurance, for example, they tell you these are the things that we cover. Okay, there's, there's a deal. There's a package. The sons of Adam have a package deal. You don't want that. You don't want that. You want the package deal that comes from being saved. Yes. Amen. And born again. And washing the blood of the Lamb. Amen. So let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the deal which comes from you. Yes. Not a deal from the devil or the devil, but Lord God, the new covenant. I'm so happy, so very happy. I got the love of Jesus in my heart. I'm so happy, so very happy. I got the love of Jesus in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart today. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I got the love of Jesus in my heart. I'm so happy, so very happy. I got the love of Jesus in my heart. If you're watching today or here, 
and you're, you got and you have the love of Jesus in your heart, honor the Lord. Tell someone about Christ, Amen. Because you have the love of Jesus in your heart. I could pass away today. We could any of us watching or here, we could we could die at any moment, Amen. I could be preaching and die of a heart attack. I can't complain, but I know I, I know where I'm going to go. <laughs> I know I have a home and glory land that outshines. Okay, the sun itself. I know that the Bible says his eyes are like a flame of fire. Amen. His hair, his head is what was white as snow. That's where I'm going to go see that guy, Jesus, the Lord. But the Bible says on earth we are visitors. So we're called on this earth as believers to spread the word of God, to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. The Bible says the soul will not to sow. So let's sow the word, amen. And Lord, we pray that all, let all, all the seed that we sow bear great fruit. In Jesus' name, bless those that are watching, Lord God. Give them great understanding, and revelation, and, and, and all of these things. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord God, and we lift you up. Amen. 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 Glory to your name, Lord.